Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I just saw Kunle Afolayan's new movie, Anikulako. And the movie is basically about a man that dies and comes back to life and he gets the power to bring people back from the dead. Basically, that's basically what the story is about. And when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was like, like the production design, the the outfits, the makeup, the the costume, and when I saw the trailer, when I saw all those things from the trailer, I was immediately hooked because it reminded me of movies I used to watch when I was still younger with my parents. Those days, they, when we used to go and rent, we used to go and rent movies from movie <laughs> movie shops, rent it for like two days. It just reminded me of those films I used to watch then. So I was very very excited to see it. I should even relive relive those old times. So I was so excited about it. And seeing some of the cast members, some of those old actors, actors that I watched when I was too young, like seeing all those guys again, like it's made my heart beat <laughs> beat faster. So I was very, very excited to see it. But unfortunately, I watched the movie and I was very, very not impressed. Like I expected a lot more from this movie. For instance, the the first half of the movie, it, it drags a lot. It was like the movie did not know what it was about. It was just like trying to tell so many stories at the same time and it was failing at telling the stories it was telling. That was and like in the first half. Then the second half was still better, but that first half was just like they were just crumbling. They didn't know what they were doing and it just felt like it felt like amateurish. And this movie is a movie from Kulia for Lion. So I was expecting like something like October One. October One was also a movie by um, Kuli Afolani. I was expecting something of that caliber, but what I got was just the movie was it was very very long. It was over two hours, two hours and twenty two minutes. But I felt like some of the scenes, some of the scenes that were in the movie, some of the scenes that we actually saw, it was just long for no reason. Like some of the scenes had they had no impact on the movie, and it was like. Why are these things there? And there were some things that they could have explained more, they could have showed us more. There were some interesting interesting plots, interesting elements in the movie that could have taken much more um much more that they could that they could have talked about more. But they just skipped over it and they just told a lot of things that was very, very unnecessary. The movie dragged so much, it was longer than it needed to be, and they didn't add the needed things to it. There, there was a plot about about slavery. The king talked about slavery, and they, they talked about that slavery like they brought it up like three times, and that plot never goes anywhere. It was like, why did you talk about this thing? Like you could have told this story without talking about this particular thing, but you talked about it so much, and it did not have any 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 meaning. It did not have any. It did not add anything to the story. So like, what was the point of it? Something like that, like the sex scene, there was a sex scene, a nude scene, and I was like, <laughs> it was, the nude scene was very, 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 very unneeded. It was like, they just put the nude scene there just because they could put it there, and I was like, why is this? It felt so out of place and really, really unnecessary, but they put it there anyway, and it was like, what, what is this? Why are these people doing this? Like, but there are some things I liked about the movie. One of the thing that, one of the things I liked about the movie was the casting of Shola Shubawale. Like most of the time, I've always seen Shola Shubawale in a very like the roles that they cast her in are always roles that she's very very hyper and very very loud and quick to burst. All those hyper hyper and she was like they've begun to cast this woman in a particular role and this woman is a much more talented woman than just giving her one particular thing to be doing every time. But this this movie gave her a different kind of role. It gave her the role of like a mellow character. And seeing her play that character was just so like it made me feel so good. Like, yes, this is what I want to see this woman doing. Not every time she has to be shouting and shouting. She can be mellow and hit hit the performance as as right as it should be. And this one was fantastic from Shola Shubawale. She, she had a fantastic performance. And I think because they were speaking Yoruba, it made some of the actors it made some of the actors' performance even much better. Like, if they had been speaking English, or if they spoke English, it, they could not have spoken English in this kind of movie. But if they spoke English, it would have just made the movie a bit, how would I say, it? like, not as authentic. But the way they spoke Yoruba, it made the movie feel 
much more impactful and made the acting like i feel like when actors when they make a movie and they speak their native language in movies it always brings out the acting more i think that is one of the reasons why korean movies are very very good because they talk about the the acts in their own language and their performances are always very very good and the performances here as that that in this movie are also very good some of the performances were a bit but Bimbo Ademoye, Bimbo Ademoye was a standout character for me. Her performance was superb from beginning to end. Like, in my own opinion, she made the movie, except the sex scene, and I was like... <laughs> but some of, some of the characters also, like, some minor characters, their, their Yoruba was not as authentic as it supposed to be. It's, it had, like, some hints of modern, like... It was a bit modern, yes, the, the accent was a bit modern and it was like, these people shouldn't have this kind of accent. They are, they are in Oyo for that matter, the accent should be very, very thick and those people having a kind of modern accent, just a modern dialect, just took me out of the experience and those performances just lacked a little bit. But fortunately, it was only in like some of the minor characters that had that issue. But other than that the performances were spectacular seeing those old guys those old actors some of them could have not necessarily been in the movie but there are a lot of like some of them because they did not have a lot any lines and they were just in the movie like because they can't be in the movie so it didn't really hit as much as it should have hit but apart from that seeing those, and the ending of the movie was was anticlimactic and very very underwhelming i was like when i got to the end i was like what is this? There were some things they even tried to do to try and make us sympathize more, make us feel more emotional. But it just felt um, very late and and not worth it at all. So it just made the the ending very, very underwhelming. Like, I was expecting so much from this movie, but this movie let me down so much. Like, I didn't really enjoy it because it was just dry. It dragged a lot and at some point it felt almost boring to me. I don't like calling movies boring. But this movie was, it took, it, it went very, very close to there. <laughs> and I expected more from this movie. Anyway, that's my review on the movie. So have you seen Anikulaku? What do you think about it? Comment below and let me know. Cheers.